I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be the key to personal peak performance. We're going to go over today, I'm going to go through one email. And what I'm going to talk about is your career, your business, your mission, your purpose, what it is that you do in life, and how to keep yourself focused on the things that are most important. And we're going to talk about the psychology of success. The difference between people who achieve the things that they want to in life and the difference between people who tend to major in minor things, which is most people in this world. And the difference between the mediocre person and the really successful person is really just a few subtle differences just in the way that they think and also in the way that they take action. And so I'm going to go through some specific things because this guy, he's an actor. And I would say he's fairly well known because he, you know, I've lo looked him up online, and I'm not going to go through what his name is, but he's done a lot of work with some big name actors. One of them being Denzel Washington, another one I see Colin Farrell that he's done work with, and a bunch of other names that you would recognize. And he's struggling in his career right now, and he's having a hard time motivating himself and getting excited to go to the casting calls that his agent are sending him on. And just through reading through this short email of his, I can tell exactly where his own personal internal psychology is going wrong. And then we're at the end, we're going to talk about Michael Jordan, and then we're going to talk about a player who's currently doing really well in the Canadian Football League presently, and he'll be back in the NFL, I would say, probably in the next year because he's doing really well. And he, he got... He was undrafted, he got picked up by a couple of teams, then he had an injury, then he got released, he got cut basically, and he was pretty obviously disappointed about that, and nobody else gave him another shot, and I just spent a little bit of time with him, teaching him the psychology of how guys like Michael Jordan and other people think, and he took it to heart, and he owned that belief system, and he's been applying it ever since, and that's why he's doing really well. I'm not going to tell you who it is. But anybody can apply this, no matter what area. If you want to improve your success with women, obviously it'll help you there. But if you want to improve the success in your business, you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to improve your career, you want to get in better shape, being successful all boils down to a few subtle disciplines that you follow day in and day out. And you take the action that most people are unwilling to take the action. But before we get into this email, I got a quote that I wrote I want to share with you. And it's a really good quote because I go through the specific things that you need to focus on if you want to eventually get to a place in your life where you're living the life of your dreams, where you're hanging out with the kind of people that you want to hang out with, and you're doing the kinds of things that you want to be doing, and you're traveling around the world, and you live in the kind of house you want to have, and you drive the kind of cars you want to have, and you date the kind of people that you want to date. And so it says, if you want to reach your full potential so you can achieve your grandest goals and dreams... You need to learn to apply the secrets of personal peak performance and high achievement. Truly successful people are consistently focused on giving their best effort in every moment in time. They are focused relentlessly on incremental and moment-by-moment -moment self improvement and action taking to master their chosen passion and craft. It does not matter whether they are winning or losing, but how they apply themselves and remaining focused on taking the actions they know they need to take in the present moment. Successful people understand that success is not a moving target. Success simply comes from knowing what you want, why you want it, and having an emotionally compelling reason that motivates you to take action to try and get a little better each day. Achieving really big goals is simply successfully breaking down big problems ideas or tasks into daily achievable goals. It's by achieving the small daily goals that makes big successes inevitable over long periods of time. Unsuccessful people tend to get lost in the minutia and enormity of the challenge and work that lies before them. They therefore give up at the first sign of difficulty, challenges, setbacks, or they never even start because they become overwhelmed with fear and doubt. So let's go ahead and get in this guy's email. His email is really short, and I'm going to go through about 18 bullet points and examples, things that I'm going to point out to him. And like I said, this is obviously a lot of this is going to apply to what he's trying to do as an actor, 
But it's really the psychology of success that you can apply whether you're a real estate agent or you're an entrepreneur or you're a CEO of a company or you're a professional athlete or you're an aspiring musician or you're a very successful musician because I coach everyone that in and in between all kinds of people that are playing at the highest level and people that are just starting out trying to make it and people that are kind of halfway on their on their way to making it. And the difference between the most successful people is how they think and what they do on a daily basis to take action. As you probably heard me talk about before, like a guy like Ray Allen, who is one of the all-time leaders in three-point shot made in the NBA. One of the things that most people don't know is, and I've talked about this before, is because he's a great example. Every day at three, four hours before the game starts, he's out in the court and he's making 100 free throws. He makes 100 free throws before he stops. Repetition is the mother of skill. Excellence is not a singular act. It's a habit. You are what you do repeatedly. He's out there trying to get better every single day. When you see him in an interview or LeBron James or Dwayne Wade or Chris Bosh or any of those guys that are two-time NBA champions, they've last two years in a row, they've won. They've been to the finals three years in a row. They all say the same thing. I'm just trying to get a little bit better each day. And so let's get into his email. He says, hey, coach, I'm an actor, and I've been an actor for 20-plus years. I have a decision that I have to make, and I need your advice. I've been divorced for seven years, and I'm a single dad of two beautiful daughters. I lost momentum in my career to take care of my kids, but I have regained it in the last couple of years. There was a time when I had the passion to go out on every part that would come my way. But now I'm more selective in the roles that I want to go out for. Some of the auditions or meetings that my reps set me up for, I'm not crazy about. I'm fearful of telling them that I don't want to go out on certain roles because I don't want them to lose interest in me. You need to listen to that fear. That fear is telling you something. That's like a danger, Will Robinson. That's like a warning bell going off in your mind and in your heart saying, that's not a good idea. I mean, put put yourself in the shoes of the guy that's sending you out to a casting call. He gets paid when you get a part. That's the bottom line. And think about it, if he's got 30 or 40 other actors calling up going, dude, send me a casting call. Come on, man, I wanna make it. And you're like, oh man, fuck, I don't wanna go to a sitcom. I don't wanna, that's a shitty movie part. I don't wanna do that. Who do you think he's gonna wanna deal with? As opposed to getting you on, hey man, you know what, I really appreciate the opportunity. Fuck yeah. I'm going to go out and I'm going to give it my best fucking shot. I'm going to do everything I can to make you look good and get the part so we can both make a little bit of money off this. That's the attitude that you need to have. You need to have an attitude of gratitude. You need to get back to that guy that you were when you were first starting out. And obviously I looked through all the roles that you've had. You've had a lot of success in your career. A lot of what I would consider pretty damn fucking big success. Some big roles and some big movies with some big fucking people. The reason you, you you got those roles is because you were hungry. And it's like if you ever notice like musicians, really successful musicians, they have a run of about like five to ten years where it seems like they're banging out one hit after another. And then after that, they may tour and they may do really w- well, but you don't ever really hear from them anymore. And they're still out there. They're still, t- still touring, but they're not putting out hit singles anymore. And it's because they don't have that hunger that they once had. I saw an interview, um, I can't think, I think it was Jerry Hall, who's the ex-wife of Mick Jagger. And one of, she said something interesting. She said, because they were talking about, because obviously when was the last time the Rolling Stones had a hit single? It's probably been 25 years. I think in the, in the 80s was the last time they, they had a, a hit single. And she says basically that you know they're out on tour doing that because they don't really have anything else to do. In other words, they're kind of just going through the motions. I saw a very big band... I say used to be really huge back in the 80s, about three or four years ago. And it's just like they were going through the motions. They, I mean, they just really fucking sucked. I mean, the opening act was a hell of a lot better, who would happen to be a friend of mine, was a hell of a lot better than this particular band. And a lot of people were coming out saying that. And they were like, and they were like what do you think of the concert? And they're like, well, they kind of look like a band that's been on tour for 35, 40 years, and they're just going through the fucking motions. It's like all the passion is gone. It's like they're out there for a paycheck. They're not up on stage trying to be really fucking great, outstanding musicians. And that's what you see. 
when a, when a band is hungry and they're trying to make it and they're broke and they're sleep on the floor in hotel rooms and there's like 10 of them in a room and they're struggling and they want to make it and they're hungry and they have a desire and they're just focused on trying to be the best musicians that they can be. Like the band U2. I mean those guys were four buddies that, that grew up in Dublin, Ireland and none of them played any instruments. And they were best of friends and it was like, let's form a band. And none of them could play and they didn't take any lessons. They taught themselves how to play. And he's like Bono was saying, he's like, they were horrible for several years. But they kept playing, they kept trying, they kept writing music. Repetition's the mother of skill. And eventually they got noticed and they got signed and the rest is history. And they're still all together. They're really a tight-knit band. I think that's amazing. It's so rare. But you can tell it's like the attention to detail. It's like someone like Elton John. Same thing. He's, he's fucking phenomenal in concert. If you've seen a band like the Eagles in concert, they're phenomenal when they get on stage. So he says, I'm not just – he says, I'm just not passionate enough to want to prepare for these roles to audition for. Now listen to what he says here. He says, I need to work, but it's almost more painful to want to go in because I'm already doubting. In other words, it's like you've already lost before you go in there. You're focused on, oh, I'm probably not going to get the part. I'm just going to be disappointed again. Because like back when you were young and dumb and you didn't know any better, you were just excited to have an audition. And at the end of the day, there's thousands and tens of thousands of actors that would fucking love to have the opportunity just to go and do their thing, to just demonstrate their skills. And your, your attitude is like, well, I'm probably not going to get it anyway, so why should I go on that? I mean, think about it. You think you're going to be able to give your absolute very best? And if you think back to every really big role that you got, it's like you went in there with enthusiasm, you were excited, and you gave it your absolute fucking best shot, and it didn't really matter what happened. You left it all on the fucking table. You just fucking played full out. You totally got in to that role. But if you walk in there with like a kind of half-ass attitude, I mean, think about it. You got two, two daughters that look up to you. You're their leader. You're their mentor. You're the example of... Maybe they're not going to become actresses. Maybe they go into something else. But if they see that you just kind of half-assing through life, half-assing your job and your career and struggling when you used to be really successful at it, what do you think you're teaching them? I mean if you won't do it for yourself, do it for them. Think about them. Think about the – it's like you got to parent by example. Kids learn from you. They deserve you to give your absolute fucking best. So he says, how do I tell my reps that I want to pass on sitcoms and certain roles without them losing their enthusiasm for me? That's a bad fucking idea. That's what that is right there. You got to look at every single audition you go on is you're not auditioning for a part. You're not looking to get a fucking paycheck out of it or hit the, you know, get the next big role that makes it big for you. When you go to an audition it is a chance to practice your craft and display your skills and be your absolute very fucking best that you can be. That's why you go to an addition. You ain't there for a paycheck. You ain't there to pay your fucking bills. You ain't there to get a job. You're there to do your absolute very best. And then when you walk out of there, if you get the role, fucking great. If you get a paycheck out of it, great. That's fucking gravy. You need to be walk out of there with the attitude of, hey, you know what? I gave my best fucking shot. Flip a coin if I get it, great. If not, there's another audition tomorrow. That's what you need to be focusing on, dude. He says, I will probably need to book a phone coaching session in the future to give more detail. It's a good idea. It's a good investment. Aren't you worth it, my friend? He says, in the meantime, I would love your advice on this. So I've got a, like about 18 things here that I want to go through bullet points that are specific and you know even if you're not looking to become an actor or an entertainer, these are things that can apply to you and the psychology of how you need to think in order to become successful. It's just like I was saying a minute ago. The whole purpose of an audition is not to get a part or a paycheck or a job or a gig, whatever you want to call it. The, pur the whole purpose is that you want to showcase your talents and try to get better. Because when you act in front of other people, you're going to get feedback. You're going to get good, honest feedback. Number two, repetition is the mother of skill. 
excellence is not a singular act. It's a habit. So every day, every one of those opportunities that you have to go on a casting, you have an opportunity to be face-to-face -face with people in the business. Even if you don't get a particular role you're trying out for, You might imp they might look at you and say, that guy's really good, but you know what? He doesn't really fit the part that we're looking for. Six months later, a year later, a month later, he may be casting for something else. And he may remember you because you played full out and you gave it your fucking best shot even though they didn't really – I mean I have seen countless interviews with actors and actresses that have gone in, tried out for one particular role and they were so impressed with how well they did. They ended up giving them a different part in the movie because they weren't really ideally suited for what they were trying out for. That's why you got to go in there and give it your absolute fucking best shot because even if you don't get the role that you're there for in the first place, maybe you get a shot to read for another part. That's the way you got to look at it, dude. And so the, the next thing, number four I want to go through is help your agent get paid by being great and making him look good for sending you to the casting. I mean, think about if the role was reversed, if you were a casting agent and a guy walked in with your attitude and your career is on the line, your ability to earn a paycheck is all dependent upon whether or not you make the right hire, would you hire you with the attitude you've got and the level of effort that you're giving? On a scale of 1 to 10, every time you walk out of there, you need to be given an absolute 10 or an 11 performance, whether you get it or not. You got to have some self-respect and some personal pride in your skills and your craft. And I know you're a good fucking actor because I've seen some of the movies that you're in, and you're fucking great at it. But you can't go in there with the oh well, I don't really want to fucking be here. There's thousands of people that were fucking chomping at the bit trying to replace you. Younger guys, better looking, more talented, more enthusiasm. Think about all that. Empathize with your agent. Empathize with the casting agents. You got to look at it as you're, you go there in a way to kind of serve your casting age. I know it's a different way to look at it, but think about it. Because if you go in and you get the part and you totally kick ass, guess what? He gets fucking paid. If you go in there with a shitty attitude and you don't get anything, what does he get out of it? Fucking nothing. Other than listen to you whine about how you don't want to go to certain roles. You can't have that fucking attitude. You got to be grateful and appreciative for every single opportunity to showcase your talents. I mean, at the end of the day, you ain't Denzel Washington. You're not Mark Wahlberg. You're not Robert De Niro. You're not doing all these big roles that they're doing. You've had several really great ones in the past, but it's been a few years since you really, I mean, I see you're working a lot, but you got to go and play full fucking out in every role because you never know when you're going to see that person again in the industry or read for them on another part. Not only are you reading for one particular part, you're reading for all the other roles that every single person in there that's watching your performance and it's going to watch the tape of the performance that you gave for everything that they're going to do in the future. Because if you make a great impression on them and they remember you, and at the end of this, I'm going to teach you a way to, to help other people remember you so you make an impression on them. And I promise you, you'll get more roles that way. Because at the end of the day, nobody likes a pain in the ass or somebody with a bad attitude. Because like I said, there's thousands of people that are just chomping at the bit and would love to have the opportunity that you're totally fucking taking for granted. And I saw a documentary recently in the, on uh, Jeff Bridges. And he's a br another really brilliant actor. And when he was young, I mean his father, Lloyd Bridges, was a, obviously a very well-known, famous actor. And... and he just kind of got into it because he was around it he, you know, when he was young and he got a bunch of roles and he was good, started making some good money. And then he kind of developed a, kind of the attitude that you kind of have right now. He wasn't, like, he wasn't really sure that he wanted to stay in it or that he was really excited about it. He was just kind of eh. And so he was talking to this older established actor. This guy, the guy was much older. I think he was in his 50s or 60s if I remember right. I could be wrong but – this guy had a lot of experience. He's very well known. And he was sitting down and talking to him and he was just kind of like, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this or this is my thing or you know, I'm not really excited about this role. And he was turning down other really good roles that were being offered to him. He was just being kind of picky because he didn't really want to, wasn't sure he wanted to do it. And what this actor told him, because he, he was sitting there talking to this guy and he was just kind of, 
Not really in it, but when he got in front of the camera, he was fucking on. He was 100% playing full fucking out. It's just like when I do these videos. Sometimes I don't feel like doing a fucking video. And sometimes like when I sit down to start my phone sessions, I'm not really in the mood to do a phone session. But you know what? I'm getting paid to be there and be totally 100% present for that client. And I need to play full out and give my absolute very best because they're counting on me to fucking help them. Other people are counting on you. And so... Back to Jeff Bridges, this actor, and what this guy, you know, afterwards when he got done, he just, he started talking to him, and he said, he basically said to the effect that you've got to give your absolute very best, even when you don't feel like it, even when you feel like being lazy, even when you don't want to be there. You've got to be the absolute best that you can be when it's time, when the cameras are rolling, and the director says action, or like the way Clint Eastwood says, whenever you're ready. You have to be full on. And he learned a valuable lesson for that. It's like even when you don't feel like doing it, don't go in there and fucking half-ass because people can see that. It'll show up in your face. It'll show up in your performance. And that's going to affect your reputation. And you don't. That's the worst thing you can have is a bad reputation, especially in Hollywood. Number eight, next thing I want to share with you is you got to push through your fears and give your very best because obviously – Remember what I've, I've said a number of times, and I learned this from Tony Robbins 20-something years ago. People will do more to avoid pain than they'll do to gain pleasure. So right now, you have a perceived pain that you're going to get rejected, that you're not going to get the part, you're not going to make money, you're not going to be as big as you once were a few years ago, whatever it happens to be that's going through your mind. And so in essence, the pain of failure is more real, and you're, which, without realizing it, you're letting pain drive you away from giving your absolute best performance every single time that you're out there in front of the camera or on a casting call or on the set or you're on location. Number nine, you got to make us believe that you're the character you're playing. That's the hallmark of any good act actor. I mean, there's some actors, it's like even shitty roles, they get on and they just totally own the fucking role. They make you believe it. They, Because of their intensity... And their charisma and the way they deliver their lines, you totally pay attention to the, to an otherwise shitty movie that doesn't really have that great of a script. I mean, how many action movies have you seen that were kind of stupid and silly, but you love the main actor? And you love the little one-liners that, de that he delivers. It's kind of the same movie over and over with like kind of a different type of setting, but you're still entertained. And you still don't mind parting with your eight to ten bucks to go to the movie and blow in another 30 or 40 dollars of popcorn and crappy hot dogs and the other fucking ridiculously expensive food that, that you pay for when you go to a movie. It's like you need to be full on alpha and embody the spirit, tonality, physiology and essence of every single role that you go on. Not just the ones that you really want. It's like you got to be full. It's just like what I talk about with women. You got to treat all women the same. And that's part of the problem, guys that don't succeed with women. It's like they get around women they really like and they put them on a pedestal. They treat them like a celebrity and they're extra nice to them to the point where they let them walk all over them and they get rejected. But women they don't really care about, they stand up for themselves. They don't put up with any bullshit or any flakiness. And of course, the girl's all over them. Number 10, here's a really good example. And I saw an interview with uh, Nick Saban, who's the head football coach with, for the University of Alabama. Oh, three or four weeks ago. You can probably watch it on YouTube. And one thing that I thought was really fascinating, he, uh, the last four years, his teams have won three out of the, f the four national championships that they've competed for. That's pretty fucking amazing. That's a hell of an accomplishment. And he won, I guess it would have been about 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago, he won a national championship with LSU when he was the head coach there. So that's four national championships or his college football teams absolute fucking best in the country bar fucking none and you want to know what he focuses on what he has his team on it's not about winning it's not about scoring points all they focus on is fundamentals and every single fucking player when they step on that field they are given their absolute 100 percent best fucking effort and if you pay attention to nfl football you can watch some of the teams out there and you can see some of those big name players that are earning some big ass fucking play paychecks fucking lollygagging on the field. They're just not really trying very hard. And they're getting paid millions of fucking dollars and their teams aren't doing really well. 
And you can see it. You can see it in their body language and their physiology. Like they don't give a fuck. They're not really trying that hard. Maybe they've given up. Given up. Maybe they don't think they got a shot to win, whatever it is. But that's the thing. And you look at – study someone like John Wooden who I think he won 11 or 12 NCAA titles in basketball, college basketball during his career. He just passed away in the last couple of years. But Tony Robbins did an interview with him years ago that I listened to. And it was really fascinating because what Coach Wooden did was that it didn't matter if his team was up by 20 points or they were down 20 points. They always played the same. They were pretty even keeled. It wasn't about scoring baskets or, or winning the game. It was simply about every single player, when he stepped onto the court, he was playing full out. He was giving 100% of his effort and completely leaving everything he had on the court. And it was interesting. He said some of the games that we won, I felt we lost. Even though the score said we won, I felt we lost those games because some of my players weren't given their absolute best ever. And there were games that we won that I felt we lost. Because, and there were games that he lost that he felt that they won because his players, they showed up and they gave their absolute best ever. They should have won. But they didn't. That's just what happens sometimes. It's like flip a coin. Every woman you ask out, she ain't going to say yes. They're not going to like you. They don't, they don't like the way you're dressed. They don't like, like the way you look, your big nose, your big feet. Who cares? You gotta, the key to the universe is circulation. It's like your heart doesn't like beat and say, hey, I feel like beating right now, so let me beat and punch some blood and say, hey, I'm going to take an hour off. It's constant. Bodies in motion tend to stay in motion. Bodies at rest tend to stay at rest. So number 11, you got to lose your attachment to an outcome. In other words, you got to lose your attachment to getting a paycheck, getting a role. Forget all that bullshit. That's not important. The only thing that matters is showing up to your casting call and giving your absolute very best when you show up. And then when you're it's like if you do that, when you go to bed each night, you can say, "You know what? I gave it my best fucking shot. Tomorrow's a new day. I got another casting call, whatever." Then when you make it big, then you can pick and choose like the big dogs do. But you ain't there yet, my friend. Number 12. And as far as like sitcoms go, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of big name actors are getting back into TV because they're having a hard time finding roles on the big screen. And if you look at like where, I mean, as far as the internet goes, content is king. And you look at like Netflix and what they've realized, like the, the show House of Cards, is that people want to watch their content. They'll sit there and watch a marathon of the, the show that they did with Kevin Spacey called House of Cards. And I, that's fantastic acting, fantastic work, really believable because it's, what I love about that series is that they're portraying all these corrupt politicians that are doing and saying things that we all know that they're doing, which is basically totally fucking us over. And it's brilliant acting, brilliant work, brilliant writing, really fucking engaging content. And they make each each episode is a little, you know, sometimes there might be three or four minutes longer than another episode because they're not trying to fit into a half hour or an hour on regular television. They make the episode and it's as long as it needs to be for that particular episode. And they'll, they'll put a, like a dozen of them online and you can watch all of them. That's what people want. People want to watch their content when they fucking feel like it. That's where TV is headed. Content is king. So whether it's a sitcom or a movie, be grateful for the fucking part, dude. Be grateful for the opportunity. Number 13, a, a, an actor that I think is phenomenal, he's also a wrestler, is Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Everybody obviously knows him as The Rock. I, I follow him on Twitter. He's an absolute fucking beast. It, the guy's up like, hey, it's 3.30 a.m., I'm hitting this cardio. Hey, it's 3.30 a.m., I'm hitting chest. And he's just, he's a, he's a maniac about his workout regimen. And it's, he's just constantly tweeting pictures all day long from sets like all over the world. This guy is constantly acting. He goes into a mediocre franchise. You look at something like Fast and Furious, which like did amazing this past, these past couple of years since he kind of helped revitalize his franchise. And it's like whenever he, he steps on stage, He's full out 100% into the role that he's doing. And he makes that part. He makes that movie because of his charisma and his charm and his passion for that. And he makes everybody around him better. 
because he's showing up. He's playing full fucking out. He's going full tilt fucking boogie, leaving it all out on the acting floor. Another actor who I think is really amazing is Mark Wahlberg. I don't think I've ever seen him in a, in a movie that I didn't enjoy. I've loved, I, every movie I've watched is, is I've enjoyed. You can't say that about a lot of actors or actresses. He's obviously picky about the roles that, that he goes after, but when, he, when the cameras are rolling, he's fucking on. And obviously my favorite, Denzel Washington. I think he's one of the best actors to ever live. I mean, the guy is, no matter what he does, he is so believable. He's so into his role. He makes those characters feel like you know that person or you feel like I know a guy like that. And that's the key for a great actor is they got to be able to make you believe, because it's make-believe after all, that what you're seeing on screen is actually real, even though we all know it's make-believe. Number 16, be grateful for every audition and appreciate your agents. And here's something that you should do to really help you stand out from everybody else. When you get done with a casting or trying out for a part, I want you to send a personal handwritten note. You can get these from any drugstore. It can be blank, just a little square envelope about that big. And just write to whoever the casting director, anybody's card who you got, send it to their office. Hey, Bob, just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate you letting me try out and, and showcase my talents, my skills for such and such part. It was really great to, to meet you and have the opportunity potentially to work with you. Hope I see you again in the future. Thanks again. Put your card in there. Put your agent's card, however you guys handle that so we can get in touch with you. And I promise you, you'll probably be one of the only people that's ever taken the time to write a handwritten note out of all the hundreds and thousands of people that they've seen over the course of their career when they're trying to cast a role. And they'll remember you. And think about that. If they remember you and you make a good impression because you take five minutes to write a personal handwritten note, fill out the address and stamp it. When somebody gets there, I think it's almost kind of like a birthday card or it's, it's personal. It means something. You actually took the time to write it as opposed to just stamping some computerized memo out to somebody. And they'll remember you. And that's what you need. You need people to remember who you are. And even if they don't cast you, they might have another role down the road and they think, oh, let me call that guy. What? And they get in touch with your agent because they remember the personal handwritten note and how appreciative and grateful you were and how gracious you were that you took the time to thank them for the opportunity and thank them for what it is that they do. And they call your agent and say, hey, I've got this part and I'd really like so-and-so to try out for it. Think about that, dude. President Bush, the first President Bush, I can't remember who it was, but somebody asked him in an interview, like, if you were to attribute your success in life to, like, one simple thing that you do and you've consistently done over time, what would it be? And he says, every day I write five or six personal handwritten notes just thanking people for what they do. And even if it was a caterer or somebody that he met at a party or whatever or a function, hey, nice meeting the other day, just wanted to say thanks. Hey, really enjoyed the speech. Hey, really enjoyed our meeting. And he'd sign his name. He says that one thing is what he attributes the majority of his success and connections that he's made over the course of his life. Number 17, ask all successful people that you encounter, people that you look up to and you think, wow, that guy or that, that woman is really fucking good, what their best secrets for success are and how you can become better at your craft. Ask them how did they get to where they are? How did they become in other words, you want to look at yourself as kind of like to use a uh, Star Wars analogy as like a little Padawan. It's like if you were to, you know, like what, what would you suggest that I need to do or what I need to work on in order to become a better actor, to get more roles, to be more successful? It's like what are the daily disciplines that you work on? What are your mindsets? How do you look at success? How do you approach each role? How do, what do, you, how do you handle things? When you get a, a casting call for something you don't really want to go on, but you go on it anyways, well, how do you approach that? What's your mindset? What's the psychology of your belief system? People love to talk about themselves, and people love to fucking give advice. And when you get around some of those other big name actors, guys like Denzel Washington, Colin Farrell, some of those other guys that you've acted with, ask them things like that. And listen. Send them a personal handwritten note. Send it to their agent. However, however it is that you can get back to them 
and let them know that you appreciate the fact they took five minutes of their time just to give you a little bit of advice because they'll remember you because you never fucking know when you know if you do something like that even if you maybe you hand it to them on set six months later a year later their agents approach them there's this big movie they're going to do and there's a part in there that they still haven't cast you like hey you need to call so and so his agent that guy is really fucking awesome i worked with him a couple years ago hell of a nice guy wrote me this nice handwritten note nobody's ever fucking done that for me and and just thanking me for my time and you know what let's let's have that guy come in and read for that part i can't count the number of times i've seen interviews with actors and actresses where something like that there that's the story of how they got a part it was a connection that they made with somebody they gave him a handwritten note and they made it and became very successful and they remembered other people that they met along the way and so number 18 the last thing that i want to go through with you is an example of how Mike, Tony Robbins sat down with Michael Jordan, I don't know how many years, probably 15, 18, 20 years ago, whatever, whatever the hell it was. And he said, what is the reason for all of your success? What's the difference? And this is what I shared with that player that got cut from the NFL team a few years ago. And he's been playing in the Canadian Football League for I think about three, four years now at this point. And he's really fucking balling out. He's kicking ass. And within the next year or two, he'll be back in the NFL. And I'm not going to tell you who it is, but this is what I shared with him. And this is what Michael shared with Tony. He said, this is, what, this, is how, this is why Michael Jordan was such a freak of nature and why he won six NBA titles and has just ridiculous amounts of records. Some of them probably won't be broken for 50 or 100 years, if ever. One of the best to ever play the fucking game. And this is, this is the whole thing, the whole ball of wax for Michael Jordan. This is what, why Michael Jordan was why Michael, who Michael Jordan was. This is how he achieved everything. He said, I demand more for myself. I have higher standards for myself than my coaches, than my teammates, my friends, my family, and my fans. In other words, he holds himself to a much higher standard than anybody else expects or even asks of him. And because of that, he works harder, he studied film harder, he practiced harder. I mean, this is a guy that sophomore year you would think he was killing it. Well, he got cut from the varsity basketball team. He didn't even fucking make the varsity basketball team sophomore year. And his coach saw that he had talent. And he says, and he obviously was pretty disappointed. And he said, tell you what, if you meet me every day after school for the rest of this year, I promise you next basketball season you'll definitely make the team. And so it took that coach caring enough to see that Michael had a gift that was kind of raw and underdeveloped, but he was willing to work at it. And so he did those little things that nobody else is willing to do. That's just the same kind of stuff that Ray Allen does. It's the same thing that LeBron James does. That's why I follow guys like that on Twitter. They're working out. Even in the off two weeks after he won the championship, he's hitting the gym. He's getting ready for the, this year's season, even though it was three months away. Why? Because that's what the great players do. The, the best of the best of the best, that's how they approach things in life. That's why they achieve the level of success that they're achieving. So if you'd like to get my help personally to help you improve in any area of your life, whether it's figuring out your purpose, your goals, your mission, get your business turned around, your career turned around, your relationship turned around, get your health turned around, get in great shape, go to my website. Click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a paid phone, Skype, or email session with yours truly. And I will talk to you soon. 